uh, so it's just right around the corner. Uh, hopefully, uh, you have seen the list of uh, all the webinars that we've been offering and uh, can attend some of the others that we have uh, leading up to November 17th. And hopefully everyone that's on here is also registered to participate in the event. So uh, what we would like for you to learn today is about the SBIR and STTR or as government officials, uh, Cyber Sitter uh, and uh, how it uh, uh, works with the Air Force, uh, with, with the uh, AFWorks. So uh, we will learn a lot about that today and how that pertains to your business. Uh, but prior to uh, introducing uh, Jim's uh, Sweeney, uh, we are going to have uh, Sharon Hopkins from PTAC talk about PTAC a little bit uh, so that you be can become more familiar with the types of services that PTAC offers. Uh, so Sharon, do you want to go ahead and, and talk about PTAC? Sure. Um, good morning. Um, welcome to the training today. Um, you're in for a delightful morning uh, with Jim. So um, to, to talk a few minutes about PTAC, for those of you that may not be aware, um, it stands for Procurement Technical Assistance, Ser Assistance Center, and we offer services that help your business sell to government at all levels, and that includes local, state, and federal. Um, we do that by one-on-one -on -one appointments. Um, we, get, we can give you guidance, advice, answer your questions. Um, we have a bid matching service um, that will match your, um, your business and what you do against what the government's buying and you would get those bids each day. Um, um, that your emphasis Sharon, you're cutting out. I can't hear you anymore. Then bidding, walk you each. We help you do it. Jill, did you have something to say? Yeah, you you cut out a little bit. Now I hear you again. Oh, okay, sorry. I I don't know. Um, yeah, it said my inter my internet was unstable, but I'm at the office, so that's kind of weird. But anyway, um, so. Um, like I said, we do um, we do our we we assist businesses by um, giving them guidance, one on one you know one on one appointments, training, uh, group seminar trainings like we're doing now, um, and then we can also do some market research for you to find out, um, help you determine which agencies buy your product, help you market um, to those agencies as well. Um, our services are at no cost to you, um, the business. Um, we are a grant funded um, program and we are funded through the Department of Defense, the state of Ohio, and then Ohio University matches those funds um, to provide this service to you. Um, we, you know, when I mentioned um, marketing, uh, we help you develop capability statement, which is a one page resume of your business. We also help you get registered at the appropriate places um, and, and uh, apply for certifications if you um, happen to be in a certification group. We um, try to introduce you to procurement officials, which is um, part of what we're doing with the matchmaker, which is part of um, this webinar series. Um, the, um, oh, well, this is sort of a, a network picture of um, the Ohio PTACs. Um, we have the Southern Ohio PTAC that is separate from our statewide network, um, but they serve 10 counties in Southern Ohio and we work very closely with them. Um, we have Ohio University that covers Akron, Athens, Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland, Dayton, Kirtland, and Pickerington. Um, also, as part of the statewide, Youngstown State University um, is over in the Youngstown area and serves three counties there. And then Rhode State Community College serves counties in Northwest Ohio. 
already talked about the funding. Um, if you're not a PTAC client and you would like to be, if you come to the um, Ohio University webpage at PTAC, ptac.ohio.edu, you can click on the new client registration tab and apply to become a client. Um, if you're not in Ohio, um, the ABTAC um, is our national organization. And uh, there is a map there that you can click on your state and find the PTAC closest to you as well. So um, that is really what I have to, to offer you today. So um, again, thank you for being here today. And we look forward to our um, Jim's remarks on our, the SBIR STTR program. All right, I just, I'm sorry, I have a moment. I just, I see Tony Griffin. <laughs> Tony came out of retirement uh, to uh, rejoin PTAC, Jim. So I haven't seen Tony in person for a very long time. So it's great to see you. And uh, Jill, I thought it was because you were excited whenever I took the, um, <laughs> when, I, when I took the presentation down and Tony, oh. you know, muted. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, I saw a familiar face uh, that I haven't seen for a while, so I'm very glad to see him. Yeah. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, one thing that I forgot to mention to everyone is that if you have a question, please enter it into the chat uh, because I will be uh, reviewing the chat as, as we go along here and I will ask Jim uh, whatever question you have. So uh, Pete, please feel free to use that. So let me go ahead and introduce Jim. So uh, Jim Sweeney is, uh, serves as the Department of the Air Force Division Engagement Lead in the SBIR STTR program. Uh, his background consists of both US Air Force and industry experience. He has held multiple positions at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, including Department of the Air Force Small Business Innovative Innovation Research, Division Engagement Lead, Chief Defense Focus Technologies, Chief Strategic Communications Officer, and SBIR Commercialization Readiness Program, Program Manager. So with Program Management, uh, he oversaw the F-119 Engine Flight Test Program Manager for the F-22, F-22 Pilot Training Program Manager, International Flight Simulator Program Manager for the Turkish, Israeli, and Egyptian Air Forces, and began his government career as a contract negotiator for the F-16 Block 40 multi-year buy program. His industry experience includes program manager for the Royal Saudi Air Force Airborne Rangeless Training System, Nellis Air Combat Training System program manager, B-52 Airborne Infrared Camera Fleet Retrofit, uh, Rangeless Airborne Instrumentation and Debriefing System, British French Joint Development Production, International Deployment Program, and, and for Miniature Antenna Development and Manufacturing, a couple of surveillance organizations in Washington, D.C. Wow, that is very impressive. So we're very glad to have you on board today, Jim. And uh, let me get your, I'm going to hit start sharing my screen. Let me pull this up. And I will share my screen. Get you on here, up here. Uh, Jim, can you see your presentation? Looks good, thank you. Okay, let me pull up the chat box real quick and then I'll hit full screen. Okay. And chat. I see that. And now I will hit full screen. Okay, and then just let me know when you want me to forward a slide. Okay. Well, good morning. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Jill and Sharon, thank you for having me today. And for all those that are uh, participating, um, real pleasure. I'm uh, really glad to be able to tell you a little bit about our program. Hopefully there's a way that you can uh, get involved with us. Um, as uh, uh, Jill just indicated, um, I'm involved with a program that's called the Small Business Innovation Research and uh, Small Business Technical Transition Program, the STTR. 
And I'll refer to them as we're going through the discussion as SBIR and STTR as, a, as applicable. Um, a lot of the folks are just now coming aware of a program, it's called AFWORKS. And in essence, it's a rebranding for what we were doing with the Air Force SBIR, STTR program. Um, we've, uh, we became a, a part of the AFWORKS uh, program um, back in uh, 2020. And the difference is Congress basically made, not, we've got charts that'll support that as I go a little bit forward, but Congress may, uh, established a program back in 1982 called the SBIR program. And so we've been doing that since 1982. However, as just like you do, we have to review how we've performed. And so we've been looking at it and say, you know, our numbers are okay and we need to find a way to improve them just like you would uh, with a regular business. So um, a couple of years ago, AppWork showed up and uh, it was basically a method of, well, let's try a few extra things to see if we can improve how we perform. Um, on this particular chart, uh, AppWorks consists of uh, four major divisions, if you would. Um, the first one is uh, AppWorks Prime. One of the things that they're doing is they're, they're looking at disruptive technologies, things that we've all talked about, but we've never really done anything with. Uh, one of them would be the flying car. Uh, the last couple of years, we've actually funded uh, the prime activity so that we can get some companies to bring their technology in the way of flying cars uh, to the Air Force to see if we can actually implement them as one of our tools that we can provide to the warfighter uh, and a new capability of uh, bringing a commercial product and making it a, something that our warfighters can use. And if anybody is interested in that particular thing uh, or in that area, by all means, uh, we need to have that conversation. And then we've got another one, it's called Spark. Now we've, as you know, we've got just short of uh, 700,000 people that work for the Air Force. And out of those 700,000, there are a ton of new ideas that folks have got to improve the process, come up with a, some new ideas, um, different uh, process changes and so forth. And it's an in-house kind of thing where, you know, we look for the folks that fix the airplanes, fly the airplanes, um, all the other systems, the IT guys, the, they maintain the bases and so forth. Um, we're looking for their ideas and they actually bring those ideas and we find ways to fund them using the SBIR, STTR program, as well as connecting with small businesses such as yourself. And uh, these organizations are also funded in such a manner that they do not necessarily have to use the SBIR money. They can use their own funds to contract with you directly. And that's truly a great idea. And then if you go to the next one on the right, uh, bottom right, it's called App Ventures. Now App Ventures, this is really where the SBIR, STTR program falls under. Um, they've uh, picked up the budget that we've got and our fiscal 21 budget is currently at about just short of $1 billion. Uh, for fiscal 21. So there's a lot of things that we can do with the SBIR program, all under the, uh, um, the umbrella of uh, App Ventures. Um, App Ventures also brought with it uh, a new program. It's called Open Topics. And I'm hoping that uh, quite a few of you companies that are uh, participating here would uh, uh, participate in that. What we do is we, uh, uh, you bring in your capabilities, you tell us of what you've got, new ideas. Oftentimes it's a commercial product. And so what we wanna do is 
see if we can take that commercial product and use it for something that the Air Force can use. Um, we, uh, and one of the benefits of AppWorks, and I apologize for uh, hanging on it so tightly here, but it is a big change for what the program's doing. We've made significant changes in how we do our business. For instance, uh, it used to take, to take anywhere. anywhere. Sorry. I, I'm not sure what that was. Okay. So anyway, we used to take anywhere from 12 to 18 months just to award a contract. Well, we understand that the small business guys, they don't have tons of time to wait around for us to uh, award a contract and finally fund you. So we've accelerated that. And now we're able to take anywhere from the proposal review to a contract award in under 180 days. Big difference. Uh, we went from 12 to 18 months to uh, oftentimes it's under six months. Uh, that's a big difference. Um, we're also able to fund a lot faster than we ever were before. And the intent was the sooner we get you on contract and funded, the sooner you can get the development and uh, uh, delivery of your technologies uh, to the Air Force a lot faster. And for clarification, for the Cyber Sitter Program, S-B-I-R-S-T-T-R, the Cyber Sitter Program, um, some of the agencies uh, will issue grants. This is uh, like Department of Energy, National Science Foundation, uh, DARPA, and a few of the others. What they're looking for is you to do the innovative research as best you can, as fast as you can, and to see what comes out of that. The Air Force, now granted, uh, we do uh, look for speed and accuracy, but we issue contracts which means at the end of the day, we're looking for a product that we can actually use and send to uh, our warfighter. These are our kids that, we're, uh, that are in uniform and we're trying to outfit them with the most uh, uh, current and the best possible capability uh, before they uh, do the nation's bidding. Next chart, please. Uh, we have a question before uh, we go to the next chart from one of okay. our attendees. Okay. Uh, this is from Portia Brown. Uh, she states, my work is introduced, introducing social technology to build awareness-based decision-making and changing organizational systems. Before you get to evidence-based decision-making, teams and leaders need to pay attention to how they search for evidence, what evidence they're seeking, and what evidence they think is best for the larger system in a sustainable way. For example, the water issues you discussed in the pre-show dialogue, social technology addresses the human component. Any room for social technology process solutions in SBIR or STTR? So it looks like the question is social technology process solutions. Uh, the Air Force is uh, full spectrum. So um, I'm associated directly um, and we didn't go through that first chart, but I'm uh, based out of Wright-Patterson Air Force Base down here in Dayton, Ohio. And that's the headquarters for the Air Force Research Laboratory. And we've got a whole cadre, a whole lot of folks that are working those kinds of uh, uh, human um, uh, situations and uh, research. Um, I would think that if uh, you were to respond to some of the solicitations. You could bring your uh, technology in, present it, and uh, see if we can actually get you funded. I think that that would be a perfect topic uh, for the open topic uh, uh, process. And, you know, as we all know, uh, if you're not talking to anybody, uh, nobody knows about your technology. So what we're trying to do is get you in front of the folks that would be interested in what you're doing. And I'm pretty certain, for instance, at Wright-Patterson in the research lab, they have the 7-11th human performance wing. Those are the kinds of things that they would be interested in. So um, as I'm not a check writer, um, I'm not a guarantor, 
for what uh, you know you talking with them. I, you know, I'm not going to guarantee that there is a uh, a match or that there would be a contract uh, established. But my team, what we do is we connect you with, uh, we attempt to connect you with uh, the right folks that would be very interested in what you're doing. That's uh, the technology you just talked about. Very cool. Um, I think that there's some uh, possibilities there. So um, we do have contact uh, information later on in the briefing. And if you were to send your information into uh, one of the links there, um, uh, the folks do respond like within 24 hours. So we can get you talking to somebody, hopefully fairly quickly. Hope I answered your question. Very good. Yep, she said, thanks for the directions. Oh, you bet. Um, okay, as with any organization, there's usually the uh, org chart. And currently, uh, Colonel Diller, he's our director uh, for the uh, AFWorks program. And if you go to the very bottom line, uh, you'll see under the red circle, uh, that's my boss. And uh, my boss and what we do is uh, part of what we're doing is what we're doing right now. Um, I'm talking to you about what the program is, getting you aware of what's out there, the possibilities, and uh, basically the request, come talk to us. Let's see if we can uh, generate some interest. Um, and we have our own financial group. And the third box, this is really big. We actually established our own contracting group. They only do SBIR, STTR work. Um, you know, all of the base contracting stuff or all of the buying of airplanes or, uh, you know, the big giant uh, programs that you read about in the newspaper all the time. Uh, we do parts that contribute to that, but our main focus is on the SBIR, STTR program. That allows us to do it in a much more uh, expedited and uh, efficient manner. Uh, and the same with the financial group. Uh, we know what our budget is and we're able to parse that out in such a manner that uh, uh, when it comes time to funding the small businesses, that would be you folks, um, that's where uh, you would get the checks from, quote unquote. And then also I mentioned that we've got the Prime Group, uh, we've got the Spark Group, the App Ventures Group, and uh, in between those, you've got the integration. Those are the folks that contribute to keeping the whole AppWorks uh, system alive and kicking. And then you got the operations. This is uh, just to summarize it in a short manner, the operations group, we have to report to Congress every year on what our return on investment was. How did we do? And just like anybody would do with an annual report kind of thing, except we're reporting all year long, letting Congress know what we're doing. And a lot of those reports go to the senior leadership in the Air Force and other organizations. So very, very uh, critical and important part. So we've got a whole lot of things that are happening under the uh, AFWorks leadership, and I'll state it again, as we manage and run the Air Force SBIR STTR program. So there's a lot of parts here, but if you can focus on the SBIR STTR program, I think we can get you up and running. Next chart, please. There you go. Okay, you're gonna see a couple acronyms and I will explain what those are. So uh, um, uh, it was just easier to put it in the uh, logo like this. AFRL stands for Air Force uh, Research Laboratory and the RGB, that's my office symbol. And AFWorks is AFWorks. Then you look at DAF. That's Department of the Air Force. That's what they want us to be called now. So we're the Department of the Air Force. So when you see that, uh, that's what that means. Our mission statement. What we're trying to do is we're trying to enable and get the technologies that you developed and you came up with, all of those ideas, we want to get those out to the warfighter. 
And we're using the SBIR program as uh, seed funding and a method to where we can actually assist you with your development efforts to uh, get that such that you can deliver and uh, ship that out to our war fighters. There's a whole lot of moving parts to this. And, uh, you know, if we can get you involved with the system, we can walk you through the, the small details. Our vision statement. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take all that we can knowledge-wise, uh, concept-wise. We're trying to get to know who does all this. It's basically our supply chain, if you would, and keep you up to speed with the ever-changing Sitter um, ecosystem. Our program changes so rapidly, and the fact that we've got small businesses and uh, I didn't clarify this up front, probably should have. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the SBIR program um, in its entirety, but for those that are not, um, our goal is to get you on board, find all those small businesses that are interested in doing business with the Air Force or the Department of Defense. And we want those ideas and the, it all starts with, let's have the dialogue and the conversation. So that's where we're at. And that's a huge part for getting you successful, making us successful. Uh, so it's, uh, you can see where there's a whole lot of uh, synergy uh, with all of this, we're, we're in it together. And I, I, I really want a foot stomp saying that we can't do it without you. So, um, we are looking for your, uh, your inputs. Um, there's a whole lot of things that go on with the Air Force, with the government uh, procurement system. We have rules and regulations that we have to do. And our goal is to walk you through that, make it as simple as we can. Um, there's some things that, well, you just have to do what we have to do. But all that's called out when we give you instructions for when you respond to a solicitation or when you're working with us. Our job is to make it as uh, simple as we can for you because you've got work to do and we got to find a way so that you're not bogged down just doing all the administration stuff. Um, the Air Force, we've got uh, all the technology folks. We got the other organizations such as uh, these are the ones that would use the airplanes, use the systems, uh, use all the computer uh, uh, data and, you know, maintain facilities. The, the list is extremely long, but our job is to integrate the SBIR program such that we can uh, assist you helping us do that. Now, one thing I uh, uh, neglected to state, and I apologize, on the very... Uh, first chart that was shown. We also brought in Space Force. You've seen it in the news. They came up with new uniforms. They're a brand new organization for the Air Force. And they became part of the AFWORKS um, cycle as well. And that happened, I believe it was in uh, August of this year. So we're working a lot of things that uh, support what AFWORKS is doing. And it'd be really great if we can get the small business community to say, hey, we've got stuff that would uh, support what they're doing. Our technology can actually do something like that. Next chart, please. Okay, I kind of alluded to this when I first started. Uh, in 1982, Congress, they came up with the SBIR, Con, or, uh, uh, program, and they made it into law. And this is a uh, cut and paste from uh, one of the documents. And the real goal and purpose and reason for the, uh, them coming up with it is, usually when you think of uh, somebody doing work for the Department of Defense, you're thinking of Boeing, Lockheed, Raytheon, um, Northrop Grumman, uh, L3, uh, Harris and all those kinds of companies. And they typically get very, very large dollar contracts. But you figure a majority of um, 
new jobs in the United States comes from small businesses. So that's a huge footprint that the small business community has. And Congress wanted to level the playing field by making sure that some of the funding that's provided to the DOD is applied and given to the small business community. So in uh, my summarized uh, simple approach, the reason for SIBR is we've got to get the small business, that's the SB part of SBIR, we've got to get you involved. And the only way to do that is if we fund a lot of the work that you're doing to get you started. That's why Congress came up with this. Uh, they wanted to uh, you know, come up with the idea, uh, test the, the, uh, the articles, and then find a way to manufacture it in such a manner that you can actually make some money at the end of the day. The intent is for you to be successful. We know that if you're successful, you're uh, sending your kids to college, you're buying houses, uh, you're supporting the economy, you're paying the taxes, all of that. And you couldn't do that if you didn't have uh, the means by a, a job or uh, work-related issues. So what we're trying to do is let's use the SIBR program. And that's one of the metrics we have to show. What impact did we have for the communities? Did Ohio benefit from the SBIR program? Um, and yes, they have. Uh, the rest of the United States. Um, so when you think of SIBR, it's, uh, it's a congressional uh, statute. That's a law. It's something that it's really not an option for us. We have to do that. But we've embraced it because we found that it's, it's really a great program. And um, I've been doing this for a whole bunch of years. Thoroughly enjoy it. Next chart, please. And some of you are familiar with the SBIR program. And uh, if you are not, I'll just do a real quick uh, walk you through here. We have phase one and phase two and phase three. There's also another one that's not on the page. That's a phase zero. This is where you're sitting at the table and you come up with an idea and you know who your customer would be for that particular technology. And you're thinking that it would fit onto this particular platform or something like that. That's your phase zero. And you always keep that in the back of your mind because that's your plan on how you're gonna be successful before you begin your uh, uh, cycle of working through the SBIR program. Your phase one, this is where you've been able to uh, establish, uh, put your ideas together and you're starting to vocalize what that technology is. And you've been able to approach the Air Force and you actually received an award. And the period of performance on that would be uh, up to 12 months. And depending on uh, the organization that's, uh, that you'll be supporting, it could be up to say uh, $260,000. And then you've done a great job. You've got a great connection with your customer. And they said, this is looking really good. Uh, we're gonna endorse you. We're going to advocate you getting a phase two. Phase two is where you typically, you've built a test article, you've built something that you can evaluate and validate that it's achieving the goals that uh, you set out and that you socialize with your customer. Um, it's it's got to go so fast. It's, uh, it's got to generate X amount of uh, thrust or horsepower. Um, and it's supposed to do this or that and you're actually testing your, uh, your unit and you're working the data and sharing that data with your customer. And now I'm also gonna step to the side for a minute and state, as you're working with your customer, you should be communicating with your customer frequently and um, making sure that you're fully aware of what their interests are and they know exactly what you're capable of doing and what you are doing. We have run into uh, some companies that they've received the award and they got their head down, they're making the development activities go on, but 
they not really socializing, keeping in touch with the customer and the Air Force changes um, the direction and the ideas of what they need all the time. The seven o'clock news uh, gives you an indication of how things change. Well, the Air Force responds to all kinds of differing situations. So the development that you initially started could evolve to be something slightly different. And the only way you're staying on top of that is uh, you're communicating with your customer. And at the end of the day, uh, when you ready for delivery, they got exactly what they're looking for. And you've been able to uh, sell that product to them. So I highly encourage you, uh, make sure you're communicating with your customer. Now the phase two, uh, that's up to a two year uh, period of performance. And if your uh, customer uh, advocates it and so forth, you can get actually up to $1.7 million. So the object is you're doing more, the object is, is for you to be paid more. And that's where all that goes. So now you're looking at slightly over um, uh, $2 million worth of investment in your technology. You've been communicating, customer knows what you're doing, he's seen the data, he's witnessed your uh, product. And then this is where you really want to be. It's called phase three, the commercialization. The difference is, as opposed to using SBIR money, the customer that you're working with, they can come up with funding uh, to procure the uh, technology that you're, uh, you've developed and are in the process of selling. And of course, we're looking for those guys, those organizations to buy as much as they can uh, because now it's, this is where you basically pick up your return on your investment. You got a lot invested here. Uh, your, uh, you know, your intellectual property, you've got uh, all kinds of uh, things that you brought in and ideas. Well, now's the time for you to make some money because um, you're selling your technology and that's what we want. But the key here is uh, we're unable at that point to uh, provide any additional SBIR funding. The, the real thing that you should also take away is because you've had a phase one or a phase two, you've satisfied the requirement that Congress put on it on the program that it has to be competed. This is a highly competitive program, but you've received a phase one or a phase two, and um, that meant that you've satisfied that uh, uh, sole source uh, requirement or a competition requirement, and that their customer can go to you without having to compete. They can write purchase orders for that particular uh, uh, technology that you've got. It's really a, a great thing to have and it saves you a lot of time. Okay, next chart, please. I have a question before you go on to the next chart. So can companies, if they already have uh, their concept, can they go ahead and apply for a phase two without having applied for a phase one and then it performing a phase one first? Yes, um, excellent segue. Um, okay. We have a program called Direct to Phase Two. And this particular uh, uh, pro program is reserved for those uh, companies that have, have an idea that's mature enough that they can actually um, show their customer that says, hey, I'm quite a bit down the road already um, with the development. And what we're looking for is to fine tune it for what you, our customer, are specifically looking for. And on the direct to phase twos, um, as opposed to starting out at like the 260,000 or the $50,000 uh, level, um, they could actually uh, uh, fund you for up to um, uh, 1.5 and $1.7 million because you're much further along. And the intent is you, uh, you're able to get your development comp accomplished in a much more expedited manner, and we get to actually use that technology much faster. So if 
I highly encourage you, if you have a technology that you've already got some time in on and you've, um, you know, put the, uh, it, it looks like you're further down than just the napkin sketch, um, this is really a great opportunity for you to get on board. And yes, we do direct to phase twos every year. Um, so and another it, question. Too, yeah. So if a business has gone through phase one and approved for phase one, it, there's a se separate solicitation and application process for phase two. So is that right? So if you get a phase one, you're not guaranteed a phase two. That is correct. Uh, remember, it's competitive. But if you've been communicating and you're doing really well with your development, um, we've showed that those are the companies that uh, will be uh, uh, advocated and uh, requested to get into a phase two. And you'll have to do a, uh, um, a, a small proposal to say, hey, this is what we're going to do during our phase two effort. And uh, that becomes part of um, that solicitation for a phase two. So yes, it's, a, it's very possible, but I would highly recommend that. Okay, thank you. And uh, perfect for going ahead. Um, I've already uh, indicated uh, some of these uh, items already on this particular chart. Uh, you know, our uh, uh, congressional uh, law coming into effect in 1982, and then of course the phase one, phase two, and phase three. Um, what we're trying to do and what we consider our technical challenges are, you know, we're one of the hardest parts of doing anything here is to make sure that it's adequately funded. And I'm preaching to the choir, but um, the family that I grew up in, uh, we were a small business company. Um, in fact, you probably used them if you're, well, a little bit older. Um, used to be uh, take a picture with a 35 millimeter camera. And then you'd have to send the, the film out to be developed. Well, my dad came up with a technology where they were able to develop that roll of uh, 35 millimeter film in an hour. Uh, you heard a moto photo, one hour photo, uh, Walmart, Kmart, all of those. They had equipment in their facility where they could develop your film. Well, that was my dad's uh, company, but it took years and years to get there. Uh, my dad retired. Um, from that, just as uh, digital uh, photography came in. And my dad did really well. So he was able to overcome the shortage of funding. Um, when they were developing, I remember they had like three mortgages on our house. Mom had to go to work. And in high school, when I was working, the money went to help pay the bills. So there's a lot of folks that contributed to making it successful, but at the end, uh, I, we got there. So it was great. Um, the service life, life limitation. Uh, this could be also the fact that the technology today is different than it was uh, a year or two or three years ago. Look at the iPhone, for instance. Um, they're just coming out with the iPhone 13. And for all intents and purposes, I think it's already obsolete because they're already working on the next version. So, you know, we've got to be agile, we've got to be flexible. And that's why we like working with the small businesses because you can do it way faster than we can or the major defense contractor guys. Uh, that's why it's uh, wonderful to work with the small businesses. We also have to control the costs. If it's too expensive, we can't buy very many um, or if any at all. So we have to control those costs. Uh, and that's something that you, the small business guys, thoroughly understand. You know, uh, a dollar for you is uh, like gazillions of dollars for the Air Force. So it's very, very important that we control our costs and we got to make sure that it's uh, in the proper manner. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the requirements change all the time because uh, our adversaries or uh, the science involved um, is such that we understand it a lot better than we did before. Um, so we have to make those changes and that fits where your uh, functional problem 
um, you know, that uh, interferes with the, how the mission's uh, uh, conducted. So there's a lot of things that go into this. It's standard business, if you would. Next chart, please. Okay, then you heard about the STTR, uh, Small Business Technology Transfer. Um, you know, here we'd been working on the SIBR for uh, about 10 years, and then uh, Congress said, well, you know, we're, we've got all these uh, universities out there that are doing all kinds of research, but we haven't really brought them into the SBIR program. So in 1992, they established the STTR program, and that was to get the universities and the federal research uh, development centers lined up and also um, the uh, uh, nonprofit research institutes, get them into the point where we can actually fund some of those um, activities. And there are requirements where they have to uh, partner with the small business guys. So this, there are opportunities for you, the small business, to work with the universities and come up with the technologies uh, that we're looking for. Uh, ultimately. And uh, the universities typically take uh, a lot of the conceptual ideas and it, it rolls into something that ultimately uh, transitions down road. So uh, I highly encourage you if uh, you have that kind of an interest and your technology fits that particular profile, uh, consider doing an STTR. Next chart, please. So I've kind of um, broached on this uh, previously, but uh, there's three primary uh, ways in which you can participate. I've already mentioned the open topic. And uh, just briefly on what this is, this is where you bring uh, ideas that you've got that we never even thought of. I mean, who would have ever thought about that? Well, you did. Bring it to us. Let's have that conversation. Uh, that'll stir up some ideas that we never, uh, uh, you know, put into it. You know, we're worried about uh, how big the next airplane is, or what type of airplane, and uh, what requirements it's got. Well, your technologies would potentially fit on that platform or improve the performance of that platform. We need to have that conversation. We this open topic program is. It starts out as it's a uh, $50,000 award and you have 90 days to um, find the organizations that are interested in your uh, technology. Um, and this is where you, uh, you know, you're doing your uh, cold calling, you're, you're making as much effort as you can to find somebody that would be interested in the technology that you've uh, just been funded $50,000 for. And the goal out of that is to have that company say, this is a great idea and they're gonna advocate you getting a phase two uh, right away. So that's uh, really a great opportunity. And quite frankly, we have several thousand uh, uh, open topic awards every year. And uh, why not uh, you be a part of that with us? So uh, we'd look forward to it. Next one down is specific topic. Now I mentioned that uh, at Wright-Patterson, we have the Air Force Research Laboratory. Now these are the guys that are doing just the really amazing uh, science and technology exploration. They're looking for, uh, you know, from the science and the engineering side, they're looking for the technologies that would really do a great job uh, in satisfying what the Air Force is doing uh, in responding to their Air Force needs. So we call it specific topics because they're able to determine what those uh, technologies would be. And uh, we provide them funding so that they can do their own contract awards. They have the funding to go ahead and talk with multiple small businesses and to get them partnered with the Air Force 
In this case, it would be a research laboratory or the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center. Um, and the latter, just out of, because uh, uh, I just brought it up, but these are the guys that actually buy the airplane, they buy the systems, they buy the uh, all kinds of uh, uh, things. And believe it or not, that's done at Wright-Patterson and their budget annually is, uh, I believe it's in excess of $46 billion. So there's a lot of taxpayer money going into the technologies that we're looking for. So the laboratories are able to come up with specific topics that would that is partnered with a small business and another organization within the Air Force or even outside the Air Force uh, to come up with that technology. Now there's another one at the very bottom. It's called the uh, TACFI and STRATFI. Uh, this would be where you've received your phase two, you're making great progress, but it's just, you still need some additional funding and you still need your customer to remain engaged with you. And so we use the STRATFI and TACFI uh, where we have a budget set aside just to handle those. This would be your follow-on, your sequential or supplemental phase two where additional money can go to the small business so that they can continue doing the development with the goal of wrapping up the development and being able to commercialize or transition that uh, technology out to the warfighter. Um, as one of the uh, 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 things that I did within the Air Force, it was that particular program and it's great. Uh, you work with all kinds of different companies and we're able to get them funding and quite a few of them that was just what they needed to uh, boost them over so that they could get their product out to the field. So as you're going along, you're looking at how all this is gonna be funded. Uh, also consider the TACFI STRATFI program. Next chart, please. And I briefly talked about the uh, open topic uh, just a moment ago. Um, and the two bullets on the left side, you know, we're looking to find a way to use the commercial technology. There's a whole lot more of the commercial technology than there is specific uh, purposeful uh, technology that you get with uh, the, uh, the government uh, uh, sponsored. So we're looking to see, can you incorporate the uh, uh, commercial, uh, commercially available uh, stuff? And so uh, that's the mission. And as I already mentioned earlier, um, this is uh, you bring in new ideas that we didn't even think of. And this has been a, uh, highly successful for us so far because we're able to get access and introduce to companies that we'd never otherwise would have done. So I uh, highly encourage you to consider uh, the open topic. And you'll also all get a uh, copy of these charts. So uh, when you get it, you can, uh, uh, you know, take a look and go through some of the smaller details. And if you have any questions, you can get back with us on that. Next chart, please. And specific topics. Uh, talked about that. This is where the laboratories, uh, this is where they get a chance to determine what the technologies are that are uh, going to satisfy the uh, nation's uh, um, technology uh, desires and uh, requirements. And working with the laboratories uh, is really a great experience. Uh, extremely talented and very knowledgeable people. And they're very familiar with working with the small businesses. And so if you get a chance to actually work on one of those specific topics, I think at the end, uh, it'll be one of those very gratifying uh, things that your company was able to do. So um, uh, they have solicitations that go out uh, every year. Um, I would say pay attention to when the solicitation dates are. And at that point, uh, that's where you'll get a, a huge opportunity to be introduced to those organizations and open the dialogue and hopefully get your technology um, where it needs to be. Next chart.
Okay, so you're saying, well, gosh, um, I've never done business with the Air Force. Uh, I have no idea what they're looking for. Um, as I mentioned at the very beginning, the Air Force is a full spectrum organization. There's all kinds of things that we need. Everything from the smallest of something to the largest of something else. Um, I have a link here that if you were to click on that, that'll take you to, this is what the Air Force is interested in. The uh, color chart there, as well as the uh, listing of uh, uh, the particular uh, topics or uh, uh, areas of interest, those um, certainly there is something that you do that would fit into one or multiples of those. So take a look at it and then kind of figure out what you've got. Then we have to have that conversation. Come talk to us. Let's see if we can get this thing started. Next chart, please. And I already talked about the TACFI StratFi. Um, and if you have any additional questions, we can link you up with the right folks that would be able to uh, guide you through what that is. Next chart. Next chart. Okay, we have a whole bunch of uh, resources. Uh, we use all kinds of media. Um, we put, uh, uh, you know, all of these links here. Uh, it describes what the Cyber program does, what AppWorks does. Um, we use, uh, for instance, YouTube. Here you are a company, you, you've joined the Cyber program, you're working with the Air Force, and you are highly successful. We actually have an organization in, uh, in my group that they will capture those successes and generate videos where we videotape you, we videotape your customer, Congress gets a copy, we put it out on YouTube. Uh, it's a great thing. And all of the companies that we've done um, throughout the years, they're all ecstatic to see that hey, look what the Air Force did. They used our technology and this is how it applies. This is what we did. This is what they did. Um, it's really enjoyable. And I think it's uh, one of the gratifying things of uh, my particular job to see the companies that uh, develop something that uh, um, folks are using. And you know, when you see a, um, any of the Air Force airplanes or commercial products, a lot of those, um, technologies started with the small business that uh, was in the Cyber program. That's pretty amazing. So uh, by all means, uh, access these uh, uh, links. And it, it also is a manner where if you have any questions, you can get back to us and we'll respond to them um, with you. So next chart, please. Okay. Um, one of the ways that we're able to do what we do is we tell all of you what we do and we provide uh, webinars similar to what we're doing right now. And uh, I provided the link and the latest data I had uh, is only for October, but we're already looking into uh, November and on out, but. Um, I just did a screenshot of just the uh, October uh, events. But if you go out to the website that I've got linked there, um, it gives you a chance to say, well, that would be interesting. It might be something that uh, I could consider. And it allows you to register and uh, they'll provide the uh, appropriate Zoom links or uh, however, you know, it could be a, a Google Meets or whatever it is but at least you'll find out where to go and you can participate in those events. Uh, very, very interesting. And the topics are always changing. They're, you know, it's, it's how to's, it's why we're doing what we're doing, it's where we're going, it's things that would be of interest to you. So um, give it a shot. Uh, see if there's something in there that would uh, uh, potentially uh, stir up some ideas that you've got so that you wanna come talk to us. Next chart, please. Um, also, 
Uh, we've got the ability to uh, let you, if you've got the time and the energy, to go and see what we've already done. A um, lot, of, lot of information. Um, and I think it would benefit uh, a lot of folks. In fact, um, I personally go out there to see what, uh, what is being said. It keeps me current. So, and this is what I do every day. So um, my thinking is for those that are unfamiliar with the program, uh, it would be very uh, informative. And um, I encourage you to uh, uh, take the time to uh, take a look and see what we've already done. Next chart. Okay, now we mentioned the stratify uh, and the tactify. Um, out of the two, uh, the stratify is where the big dollars are. And the AppWorks folks typically say that's the big bets. And then the other ones are uh, the medium bets. So, um, so if you're looking for uh, uh, your, uh, you want to come up and get some of the money, uh, take a look at your tech buy. Um, that is cyber money matched with the uh, government organization's money. So if, if the government shows up with a dollar, I can put a dollar against it. So now you've got two dollars. And, uh, and then if you're working with the, uh, a private group, uh, the private group would come up with a dollar to match the uh, cyber dollar. And the, the dollar values are just for simplicity. Um, it's a whole lot more than that. So then you got the strat fine. Now this is the larger dollars. So the Cyber dollar would, uh, Cyber would, uh, organization, this is my group, we would come in with a uh, dollar and the government organization, this would be your fighter bomber guys or your uh, instrument techno or uh, information technology folks, they'd come in with $2. So now you got three. Now, for the larger bets, um, that's where uh, uh, Cyber brings in one, the government brings in one, and then you've got outside uh, funding organizations. It could be a venture capital folk or an angel investor or some other um, non-SBIR related group. And they would bring in, um, you know, the $2. And this is where, uh, you know, you're looking at $15 million and uh, that usually happens with a waiver from the Small Business Administration, but we've seen that. So um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that the investments that we're making, we Air Force, SBIR, AFWORTS program, the investments that we're making, um, we've got, uh, the folks that we're working with, that they've got skin in the game. And what we're finding is when folks put their own money on the table, they're more inclined to actually transition that technology. So that's really the purpose that we're doing it. And also uh, the larger dollar amounts uh, goes a lot further in getting the very difficult and technically challenging uh, technologies um, through the development process. And if you, when you get to that point, we can easily walk you through the details of what you need to do, who needs to do what, and at least give you some indication on how it all works. So, um, so at, at the point of you coming up to a need for a, a TACFI, STRATFI uh, contract, uh, you know, we'll work with you on that. So that's, uh, you know, don't be intimidated by that. Next chart. I think that was it. There is a whole lot that I did not say uh, because the program has a lot of moving parts. Um, if you have any questions, I gave you some links. By all means, uh, bring those questions to us. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, if you're not talking with us, you don't know what we're looking for. And we have no idea who you are. And um, we need to change that because the small businesses bring such great ideas to the table. And you're, you've supported us uh, for years and years. Uh, we're looking to increase that, find more and more companies that are uh, doing just a great job working with us. 
the Air Force is a great organization. I've made a whole career out of working with the Air Force. Um, it's a great organization to work with. Uh, we're very small business friendly. Um, and my staff are very, very passionate about this program. And we can't wait to work with you. So by all means, uh, bring what you got. Let's have that conversation. Let's see if we can guide you in the right direction. Get you in front of the folks that need your technology or are interested to work with you to develop that technology. And other than that, thank you. I thoroughly appreciate the opportunity to work uh, and to present this information. And if you need any more, by all means, we have more to provide. Thank you so much. And thank you, Jim. If anyone has any questions, put them in the chat. Uh, but I have another question about open topic. So uh, for companies that are just trying, how do they, how do they find out? Is the open topic like they could come in and actually present to you their their idea? Or uh, is that something they schedule or how how does that work? First and foremost, um, in order to be uh, included on an open topic, uh, we do have solicitations. And the next one goes out one December. And uh, we can provide a link for where those solicitations are located to see what specific topics or the general area of topics that we're looking for. Um, they would respond to that. Um, one of the things that we do, and I did not mention this, was we have what's called a pitch day. And this is where the small businesses bring in their technologies and demonstrate what they've got, the concept, or if they've got actual physical uh, artifacts, they'll bring that in and walk the, uh, there's a panel of uh, government interested uh, uh, parties that'll be, um, taking that presentation, you know, you get to talk to them. It's almost like Shark Tank. You bring it in and during the pitch days, uh, there's times when you can actually walk away with a check that very day if that technology uh, satisfies the need that one of the organizations or somebody in the panel wants. So highly encourage that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we are started the process. The country or where are they, where are those all, are, all across the country because the Air Force is all across the country and it'll be at uh, different areas. It could be Edwards Air Force Base, Hickam in Hawaii or uh, Tyndall down in Florida, Wright Pat in Dayton. Um, you know, it, it could be just about anywhere, Hanscom in Massachusetts or uh, a lot of the Florida places, those kinds of, they're all over. And uh, uh, that'll be described in the solicitation package and it'll have uh, instructions that you can um, uh, work your way through. And um, one of the things about this whole thing, we have a period, it's called the pre-release for the uh, open topics. This allows you to talk with um, the interested parties in advance of the actual solicitation. And when the actual solicitation goes out, at that point, you're not really able to talk with the interested parties. And if you do have a question, it has to go through the contracting office. And by doing that, um, it kind of puts a little discipline in and it helps accelerate the program. But I highly encourage you to use the uh, pre-solicitation dates uh, to where you can actually ask questions. Exactly what color is this? What is it going to do? What are you looking for? You can ask those kinds of questions. How many of these are you looking for? And it gives you a chance to scale how you're responding to the proposal and the solicitation. Um, I mentioned it earlier, you gotta communicate, communicate, communicate. That's gonna uh, make you really successful. It keeps you up to speed, it keeps us up to speed. And um, by all means, uh, that's how I would approach the open topic. So where you mentioned solicitations, where are those posted? Um, I will send you the, uh, and um, somehow I just missed that on the charts here, but I'll send you the link to uh, where they can go to uh, uh, check out what the solicitation packages will be. I'll also uh, provide a schedule uh, going out into uh, 
2023 as well. Perfect. Uh, are they are they also posted on sam.gov? Um, there is a yes, there is. But um, let me give you the ones that are specific to what we're doing. It'll okay. uh, simplify the process. Okay, because I know it can probably get lost on there too. Um, yeah. There's a question. How can we schedule a meeting with you? Yeah, uh, with me personally. I believe so. Okay. Um, uh, put the request in through the uh, uh, the Cibber link, and what you, we can do is. Is it uh, on one of the charts? I'll go back. Uh, I believe it is. Um, I think it was the second one down. Yeah. This one here, cibber.gov. Um, no, let me send that link as well. So I'll send you the okay. I'll send you the contact list for us, um, and they respond really quick to that. By the way, um, I'll send that, and um, I'll send the other link uh, as well. I'll have that out to you uh, as soon as we're done with this uh, telecom. Okay, and then we can forward it on to the uh, attendees for today. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? I got a thank you comment for the information about scheduling a meeting. You bet. And you know what? It takes a couple of times to really absorb sometimes what Sibber and Sitter is, uh, the, how it can benefit your business. But Jim and I were talking yesterday uh, to prepare for this about how there's a lot of firms that that may not be R&D that still have a fit. And I gave the example of construction and janitorial because we get uh, a lot of service related industries and, and you shared that yes, there still can be a fit uh, even if, when you're in that type of industry too. Uh, and you gave the example of like a hurricane in, in Florida, but at the Air Force Base that was uh, destroyed there and how there still may be, even, even if you have a, uh, an industry that, that doesn't, isn't necessarily R&D, that there might be a fit. So can you talk to that a little bit more? Yes. Um, as you're all um, primarily aware of, we use all kinds of services, um, whether it's uh, paving roads or uh, uh, janitorial or cleaning windows or painting, all that kind of stuff. Um, each base typically has uh, contracting functions that would handle the uh, operational services such as janitorial or um, you know, the uh, painting or road repair or whatever. Um, and a lot of the individual bases have that. I know for a fact that uh, Wright-Patterson has a huge infrastructure that uh, uh, they routinely um, uh, compete with. Um, now, remember the SBIR program is the innovation research. So if you've got something that requires uh, R&D, research and development types of things, that's where the SIBR program would come up. But if what you've got is a ready to go service, um, I would say contact um, the base um, or the facility uh, contracting office, and they would be able to uh, better align you with, I think, more of what you were looking for. But if it's an SBIR program, we're looking for the innovation research. Uh, there has to be some kind of um, R&D because that's what Congress wants. Well, it's and it can be innovation in that industry. That is correct. Yes. So if you've got something, let's have that chat. Um, and also look at the uh, solicitation, which uh, the link I'll provide to uh, Jill on this. Well, I don't see any further questions. I want to say thank you so much for your time. I feel like I learned something today. Uh, I, I just think it's a fascinating program. I was very excited to hear about AFWorks too. So uh, this, this uh, webinar has been recorded. Uh, it'll be available on the Ohio Business Matchmaker website uh, within the week uh, as, uh, as well as the OUP tax site. So thank you so much for your time today, Jim. I really appreciate it. Thanks and uh, thank you so much for the invitation and uh, for all the small businesses. 
all the best to you. Let's hope we can have a conversation and see if we can get you involved with what we're doing so you can help us help you uh, help us be successful. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Have a good afternoon. All right. Thank you. you bet. Thanks a lot.